All right, let's say that we are accelerating an electron through a three volt capacitor. We're accelerating an electron through a three volt capacitor. And the question is, what will be the wavelength of the electron at the end of the experiment? That would be the de Broglie wavelength of the electron. So let's work through together how we would figure that out. So you show the three, um, three volts, and then you have so three volts times E will give you the energy. Well, that's makes sense again. You have electron volts again equals the joules. That's true. So let's actually work this out. So I would do 3 times 1.6. Right. To the 19. So I have delta U equals 4.8 times 10 to the negative 19 degrees. It's an electron, so it's negative E. So we're going to have negative. Ah, uh, no. yeah, I, I guess you could say that, although, um, let's see. Well, yeah, well, yeah, that, that's a good point. Uh, although, uh, I didn't really tell you which was the, the positive direction here. Uh -huh. So actually, all we, really, all we really need here, all we're going to need eventually is magnitudes. So why don't we just say that we're focusing on magnitudes from the start. Let's just put it in dots everywhere. All we really care about is how much the potential energy is changing. But generally, when I use E, should I give it a sign or no? Well, E, actually, E stands for the magnitude oh. of the charge. Uh, so if I ruled the universe, everyone would always write, write E with a dot on top of it. Because when people say E, they really just mean the magnitude of the charge. OK. Um, but anyway, here we got our delta U in magnitude is 4.8 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. We don't really need to know the sign here. But I mean, well, we should think about it. So did the energy go up or down here? Did the potential energy go up or down? Yeah, because the electron is moving this way. So we know that this actually is negative. This is uh, a negative energy change. But it's actually not going to help us at all to put that negative sign in any of the formulas. So we won't bother putting the negative sign in. We're just going to focus on the magnitude here. So we know it is, uh, this is a loss of energy. So then, OK. And so the next step is you go from the potential energy to the kinetic energy is the same magnitude. Good. Now, are we gaining or losing kinetic energy? Um, you're gaining. Yeah, that's the whole point of the apparatus, is to accelerate this electron. It's giving it kinetic energy by moving it to lower potential energy. So it's going to have 4.8 times 10 to the negative 19 joules more energy. But I'm just going to put in the dot, so I'm still focusing on the magnitude here. Okay. Now I want to find velocity. Mm -hmm. So I have So let's look that up. The electron mass is oh yeah, nine point one one times ten to the negative thirty. Yeah, you can always look that up. I, I can't remember it as nine eleven. All right, so nine eleven times ten to the negative thirty one. Uh, oh, did you take the square root? Yeah. Ah, that was probably my mistake then. One point oh three times ten to the sixth. My mistake. Good. Okay. Good. So you just did 
algebra, you multiplied the left-hand side by 2, then you divided it by 911 times 10 to the negative 31st, and then you took the square root to get this. Okay, that's good progress. Um, good. By the way, just as an aside, over here we said the energy change was 4.8 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. There was a different way you could have reported that. You could have said, remember originally you just said that it was E times delta V, right? And we could just say, and we know that delta V is 3. 3 watts. 3 volts, right? So you could have said the energy change was just 3 electron volts. We could have just said that delta U is 3 electron volts. 3 electron volts is 4.8 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. You could just leave the E in here and report this in volts. Sometimes that would be convenient, but that would not be convenient here because this is not standard units, and then we wouldn't get standard units as we went along in the flowchart. So sometimes it is convenient to work with electron volts, but not here because we know we're going to be chugging along in the flowchart and we need standard units for most of these equations. Um, but it would be correct to say that the delta U is 3 electron volts. Um, but here we need it in standard units of joules. Okay, but another problem, this might have been the most convenient. So the, the, the point is, sometimes it's convenient to actually plug in 1.6 times 10 to the negative. So what we did here to actually show the units, you actually plugged in for E. You plugged in 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. And then when you plugged in the volts, it's most convenient now to report it as joules per coulomb. And then the coulombs cancel and you're left with joules. So that's one good way to figure out to use this equation. The other good way is just to leave the E as E. The other good way is just to leave it as E. And then instead of writing this as joules per coulomb, I just keep it as volts. And then the answer comes out naturally in electron volts. Um, so if you want the answer to be in electron volts, you just leave the E as E and you report the potential difference in volts. On the other hand, if you want the energy to come out in joules, then you report E as 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. And when you report the potential, you write it as joules per coulomb. So the coulombs will cancel. So that's confusing, but both of those can sometimes come up on a problem. But here we needed standard units to use the flowchart. OK, so we got our V. And then what would we do? So then multiply that by M to get P. Right. Did you get again, please? 9.35 times 10 to the negative 35. Okay, I got a little different because I rounded differently, but that's good, that's close that's enough. enough. So you got 9.35? Yeah. And then lambda times 10 to the negative 25, and that would be if you wanted the units kilograms, meters per second. Good. And then h divided by p gives you. So, so then 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34. depending how you round it off, something like that. 7.09, 7.07 is what I got, times 10 to the negative 10. And so that's in meters. Good. All right, so all right, to compare it to visible light, this would be like 0 0.709 nanometers, I think. So it's not, it wouldn't be uh, close to the visible range of light. But anyway, it's not that far away from where light is. Anyway, the important thing is notice the electron has an appreciable wavelength. Um, so this is a real wavelength. This might, remember, the wavelengths are important when the wavelength is big. Now, this seems like a very small number, but the point is, big is a relative term. This is fairly big compared to the size of the atom. The atom is so small that this is big enough to matter, basically. OK. So um, it, it might not seem like uh, the electron has a very big wavelength, but you have to remember that uh, whether a wavelength is big depends on the other things it's interacting with. Well, electrons are interacting with things that are also very small. So this wavelength could be important because the other things it's interacting with are so small. I don't remember what the actual diameter of an atom is, but anyway, uh, it's around this range. Okay. 
All right, so uh, we worked out the de Broglie wavelength here. Uh, and again, a classic mistake students would make here is they would think that they're supposed to use these equations, but these are for photons. Here we're working with an electron, so you have to know which step you're in. All right, you can see why it's important to have this flowchart here, because we actually went through a whole bunch of steps. Yeah. And even if you had all these formulas in your flowchart, it would be pretty hard to make a plan of going from one end to the other without the flowchart. Um, so it really helps to have uh, all of this uh, set out. This is a pretty popular type of question on the sample exams, accelerating electrons and seeing what happens to their uh, wavelengths here. Uh, there might already be questions about this in the homework as well. Yeah, so. Anyway, it's so easy when you have, I mean, it's so straightforward when you have right. the flowchart, but otherwise you have yeah. to figure out which equation and look at all mm -hmm. the Right. One thing to keep in mind here is if you know the momentum of a particle, you can figure out its energy. And if you know the energy, you can figure out the momentum because they're both linked by the velocity. So that's a very popular type of question, to give you the momentum and ask you for the energy, or give you the energy and ask you for the momentum. Because if you know either of those, you can figure out the velocity, and then you can figure out the other concept.